みなさん、um, because I hate Christmas, I'm here to give you your worst Christmas gift. So, I'll show you how to make your cute gnome looking like the evil Mac OS. <laughs> Alright, let's do this already. First off, I have to warn you that I've prepared my Tahoe setup already, and I will go through the whole video using this. So, it's gonna be a video how I did that, rather, how I'm doing this, okay? Actually, I want to tease you right away with the one feature you probably wait the most. Shh, the blur. So, Applications Blur works behind the windows, but it also works only for specific components, like the sidebar in this case. Cool, huh? It's time to start, and first I will create a new folder, let's say Tahoe, to put all the stuff we'll need inside. Um, what stuff, you may ask? Obviously, we'll need the Tahoe GTK theme. Which, um... It has many configurations options that... Mm, da, da, da. I'm not gonna go through them. So, if you like what you see, you have to check those yourselves later, alright? <clears throat> Download the zip. Inside the Tahoe folder. The other thing we'll need is the Tahoe icon theme. And again, please check out the theme options later yourselves. By the way, there is also a Tahoe cursor theme, but there is no way to change my Makise cursor. Um, where's the icons, Chief? Perhaps a slow download? Okay, both here. Unzip them. The GTK theme. Um, and the icons? Next, we need to actually install them. Starting from G, T, K. There is a convenient install script that handles everything, and I will pass it two additional options. L is for Adwaita, B is for Blur. and that it will create a GTK config file. That in reality, it's only supported for debugging reasons, and in the future, it could be dropped. Although I doubt anyone will dare to. <laughs> now, same for the icons. Roading, roading, potato. <laughs> Um, after that point, the GTK theme will already be active, but you also need to set the icons and the shell theme, okay? Oh, and the light theme will work too. Um, yeah, okay, I don't know what the hell is going on with the background here. But it's kind of cool, and in any case, light works, bitch! <laughs> now, the very next thing is to deal with the Blur My Shell extension, but things are getting nasty from that point on. Basically, You'll have to patch and build Gnome Shell to make that to really work. No BS, Chief. The problem is that we have... <laughs> surprise, surprise! Weird artifacts in the corners. And dude, I can remember Gnome struggling with corners like for fucking ever. <sighs> Stupid Pythagoras invented them. <laughs> Fortunately, it looks like someone found a way to fix it. Um, here, you see? All seems to work fine. But to do that, he actually wrote two patches. One for Shell, and one for the Blur My Shell extension. Um... Meta. Here they are, finally. So the first is a patch for Gnome Shell, that I will download right away, and put it in Tahoe folder together with everything else. Um, and the second is a patch we need to apply to blur my shell. Basically, I'm gonna apply and build both, just in case you are unsure how to do that. It needs a few seconds in reality, so no big worries really. Okay, first I will download the latest blur my shell release. From tags, and releases. And it's version 70 that adds support for GNOME 49. 
Come to mama. <laughs> then we need Gnome Shell. Deploy, releases. And latest stable is 49.2. Bring it home to mama me. <laughs> Um, open a terminal. Typical. You know, if you watch a Linux video without a terminal, then it simply isn't a Linux. Unzip shell. Oh, by the way, I don't zoom. You can use your phone zoom, okay? Git. And apply the patch. Um, I will disable the tests from build. Not really mandatory, though. And I will install it on USR. Which means it'll basically replace my original distro package. So to revert the changes, we could simply reinstall the official packages. Easy, huh? And build. Okay, back, unzip, blur my shell. Git apply patch. And make install. Obviously, you can't maintain updates like that, so I hope all fixes will go to upstream, eventually. Anywho, now we need to restart and everything should be alright now. Kinda. Hmm. Because I still have a small corner artifact, but that might be just me? Or my graphics drivers? Not sure what's going on, to be honest. You might not be able to see it on video, but there is a small, yet super annoying, rounded shadow that I was hoping I could fix from corner effect, but that isn't working really. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe there is a hard-coded value on patch. I don't know. So let me show you the things I do know. So, in the applications view, you need to completely disable the transparency of the windows and play with the sigma value instead. Um, I guess it's better to have a files window side by side to see the changes, maybe? Huh? So the opacity slider will add transparency to the full window, which we clearly don't want, but the sigma value will adjust the blur of the components that already have opacity from the theme. Although, that doesn't always work perfectly, and some components, like some popovers, still get opacity when they really shouldn't. Um, you know what, Chief? I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Tahoe, not trash! Breeze garbage! Ha <laughs> ha